Howdy folks. Thanks for checking in to Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology.com. I am Mr. Ulrich and this is not my office. It's a good example though of how complex procedures can go crazy if there isn't a good system of organization. In this little notes cast we're going to be putting the organization into organisms. If we're going to talk about organization within organisms, the cell is a good place to start. Sorry that we have to go back to the unit that we just finished, but it's appropriate at this point. So, what is the principal unit of life? Of course, it's the cell, right? All living things are made of cell or cells. Seeing as how we spent the last month or so talking about cells and cellular processes, defining the word cell or what a cell is should be no problem, right? Of course, you're going to start off with the principal unit of life. Yeah, we've covered that already, thanks. Can we get a little bit deeper? Like, what are they made of? What do cells do? Well, cells, of course, are groups of organelles that work together to carry out all of these life processes. Uh, metabolism and growth and synthesis and responding to the changes in the environment and reproduction and all those fun things that all living things do we can find in the individual cell. For some organisms the cell is the highest form of organization. Uh, we call these single-celled organisms unicellular. Uh, examples are things like amoebas and paramecia and bacteria. Uh, but once again, for all of these single-celled organisms, the cell is the highest form of organization. But there are other organisms that have developed uh, groups of cells working together in order to more efficiently carry out life processes. We call these more than one-celled organisms multicellular, things like trees and blue whales and ants and high school students. Uh, these are all multicellular organisms. In these multicellular organisms, uh, there are similar cells that work together uh, that carry out life processes. We call these tissues. Of course, we're not talking about those kinds of tissues. Uh, the types of tissues that we're talking about, talking about these types of tissues. Now, the first type of tissue is a type that we've already met. When we did the We Are Not Plants lab, uh, we looked at some Melodia cells from the aquatic plant that we got from the pet store. Uh, and we also looked at cells that we scraped out of the insides of our cheeks. Those were epithelial cells. Uh, epithelial tissue covers all the inner and outer surfaces of our bodies. Uh, they line the uh, digestive tracts and the respiratory tract and um, all the surfaces. And there are lots of different types of epithelial tissue. The ones that we looked at were pseudostriated squamous epithelial tissue, which is a heck of a lot of fun to say. But there are other types of tissue, uh, excuse me, epithelial tissue. Uh, there are other types of tissue too. Um, another type of tissue uh, is muscle. Muscle tissue uh, has actin and myosin fibers. These are protein fibers that interact to contract and relax and they help things move around. Uh, just like there are different types of epithelial tissue, there are different types of muscle tissue. So there are striated muscles or skeletal muscle and smooth muscle. Um, and there is cardiac muscle, so there's lots of subcategories here. Another type of tissue is connective tissue. Uh, hold your body together, uh, as well as nervous tissue that transmit those electrochemical signals from one region of the body to the next. Help us respond to changes in the environment and all kinds of stuff. We start organizing groups of tissues together into structures that carry out life functions, and we get organs. No, not John Medeski. Uh, these types of organs. Organs like stomachs. Uh, the stomach is made of a lining of epithelial tissue, and it has connective tissue that holds it all together, and it has muscle tissue uh, to contract and squeeze and mash the food around. Uh, it also has nervous tissue to coordinate all of the contractions and the movement of the material. I mean, there's a lot of different tissues going on down there in your, in your stomach distracting you during class. Uh, brains are also organs. Um, we can't be animal-centric about it as well. We have to remember that leaves are multicellular and they're organized into uh, organs, uh, tissues, just like, uh, just like animals are. Hope you're seeing the trend in these definitions. 
the next level of organization uh, involves groups of organs working together to carry out different uh, life processes. Uh, this is the same PowerPoint that I use in class. You're going to have to go to my website, Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology.com, and download the uh, picture that's on there. Or you can just go to Google and search for human organ systems, and you're going to find the information. Uh, we don't stop there. We put the organ systems together and we start making individual organisms. Uh, we can even continue from there and uh, start putting groups of organisms together into populations and populations into communities and communities into ecosystems and blah, 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 blah. We can keep going a uh, long ways. Uh, but we'll save that for ecology. For now, we'll stop there for now. Uh, once again, thanks for checking into Mr. Ulrich's Land of Biology .com. I am Mr. Ulrich. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can certainly email them to me. Uh, feel free to go to my website and get all of the other associated nonsense that happens in my class. Uh, you can also go to my uh, YouTube page and see some of the other videos if you didn't get there from here. Uh, other than that, we'll see you in class.